This is Halmea, and these are its two moons, Hi'iaka and Namaka. Halmea is a rapidly spinning pebble-shaped dwarf planet that lies beyond the orbit of Neptune within a region of the solar system known as the Kuiper Belt. This makes Halmea both a trans-Neptunian object, a TNO, and a Kuiper Belt object, a KBO. Because of its unique shape and extreme features, Haumea has been the subject of many studies, each of which continue to uncover more oddities about this bizarre dwarf planet. For example, it only takes four hours for Haumea to complete one rotation, making it the fastest spinning object over 100 kilometers wide in the solar system. Then there's the fact that 10 other TNOs share a virtually identical orbit with Haumea and are roughly made out of the same material. Plus, in 2017, a ring was found orbiting Haumea, making it the first TNO ring system to ever be discovered. All these findings point to an incredible event in Haumea's history, a giant collision. One that decimated this icy planet into a dozen pieces that scattered across the Kuiper Belt and sent Haumea into a never-ending tumble through the depths of our solar system. Now this impact is surely the origin for the two Haumean moons, right? Well, sort of. As is often the case with astronomy, things just aren't as simple as they appear to be. About 3.5 billion years ago, a younger version of Haumea, about 1600 kilometers across and with a density of 2 grams per centimeter cubed, that's twice that of water, underwent a giant collision that scattered 20% of Haumea's mass into space. While this seems logical, looking at the 10 members of the Halmean family, each of which has a highly catchy, memorable name, and investigating their various orbital parameters, something doesn't quite add up. You see, to get these family members hurtling around the solar system in their current orbits, they will have required an injection of energy that's equivalent to about 400 meters per second. This energy injection is known as velocity dispersion. But when you take into account the mass of these fragments, each one being about a tenth of that 20% of Halmea that was exploded into space, that 400 meters per second would have sent them on wildly different trajectories that place them much further away from the sun than they currently are. Reverse calculations find that to place the Halmean fragments in their present day orbits, the initial velocity injection that we mentioned before would need to be about 140 meters per second, not 400 meters per second. And it's this value that's causing all the problems. Given young Haumea's mass and radius, we can calculate a parameter known as the escape velocity. This is how fast you need to be going in order to escape the gravitational pull of the planet. In the case of young Haumea, this is 900 meters per second, which is six times larger than that all-important 140 meters per second we mentioned earlier. Now it's obvious the fragments of Haumea escaped its gravitational pull, and it's pretty obvious there was a massive collision in Haumea's past. Just look at its weird shape, rotation, and this big red splotch on its surface. It took several years to figure out, but in 2009, professors Schlichting and Sari cracked the case. They proposed that Haumea did indeed undergo a giant impact, but not the same impact that produced all the fragments we see today. Instead, the debris from that collision remained in orbit around the devastated planet and eventually coalesced into a moon. This is exactly how the Earth's moon was formed. This initial moon was made up of mostly ice which came from Haumea's surface. Over the course of a billion years, this icy moon drifted further away from Haumea, until lightning struck twice and the moon was hit by a rogue KBO, Problemo! which quite literally decimated it and cannonballed the various fragments of this destroyed moon into the orbits we see today. Thus, the Haumean family was born. While this seems like a wild theory, the maths involved does add up. Estimating that the pre-blown up moon had a size that's roughly similar to the 10 Halmean fragments and the two moons all stuck together, that gives us an object about 520 kilometers across. And since we know they're all made up of mostly ice, which has a density of 1, we can figure out the mass of this object. But more importantly, we can get the mass and radius to calculate the escape velocity, which comes out to be about 190 meters per second. This is much closer to the velocity dispersion of 140 meters per second we mentioned earlier that will place the fragments in their current orbits, making this explanation the most likely for the origin of the Halmean moons. Now, given this channel is dedicated to all things moon related, I realize I've spent quite a lot of time talking about a dwarf planet, but how the moons of this dwarf planet came to be is truly fascinating. Well, that closely followed by Namaka's quirky orbit, but that's a story for a future video. Hi'iaka is the larger of the two Haumean moons, weighing roughly 1 200th of Haumea's mass and spanning 320 kilometers across, whereas Namaka, the smaller of the two, is only 1 10th of the mass of the larger moon, Hi'iaka. 
both moons are estimated to be made up of almost entirely ice, which ties in perfectly with the impact theory mentioned earlier. But what I really want to talk about is Halmaean nomenclature, which is a fancy word for how the dwarf planet and its moons got their names. Originally given the codename Santa by its US discoverers, Halmea was named after the Hawaiian goddess of fertility and childbirth. The team chose this name because the telescope that was used to discover this icy space potato is part of the Keck Observatory, which sits atop of Mauna Kea, the highest mountain of Hawaii. When it was discovered that Haumea had a pair of moons, it seemed only fitting to name them after two of Haumea's many children. Namaka is the Hawaiian goddess of the sea, and she is a key player in an epic saga from Hawaiian mythos. Seriously, check it out, because it is an amazing story. Hi'iaka is the goddess of the island of Hawaii. As well as being a bit of a jack of all gods and is known as the goddess of hula dancers, chants, sorcery, medicine, who also communicate via messenger owls. Now given the origins of these two moons and the rest of the Haumean family, the name Haumea could not be more ideal. You see, the goddess Haumea had many children, but most were not born via the conventional methods, and instead came from parts of her being. For example, Hi'iaka awoke from her mouth, whereas Namaka came from her body. So just like the children of Haumea were given life through her physical form, the fragments of the dwarf planet Haumea came to be in a poetically similar fashion. Here's hoping the wandering members of the Haumean family are named after Haumea's Hawaiian children and grandchildren sometime soon.